It is the most wonderful time of the year, and I don't know about you, but I cannot have holiday season without my favorite jammy thumbprint cookies. They are a family favorite. I have been making this recipe for about a decade, um, and dare I say, it's one of those cookies that I feel like you can put on a cookie tray that tends to always go first for whatever reason. It's just like, it's everyone's favorite. And they're very, very, very easy, very basic, and I'm thrilled to share the recipe with you. I meant to share it two years ago, and time flew away from me. Then I meant to share it last year. I was teasing you on Instagram. Time got away from me. And this year, we are doing a cookie bake along on Instagram, so come follow us there, because I'm giving you the cookie recipes and the schedule for what we're baking and when, so that we can have beautiful cookies to hand out all season long, and I do it in a very stress-free way. And these are gonna be on that platter. So, let's get started. I'm gonna do mine in my standing mixer. Um, you're gonna need some unsalted butter that's been softened at room temperature, but not too soft, please. I had that on the stove and it started to melt a little, so I moved it away. And I have it fitted with a paddle attachment, and to it, I'm gonna go ahead and add my sugar. I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna cream it. I don't wanna whip it too much. I just wanna cream it and so that it comes together and it's nice and smooth. So a total of about a minute on medium speed. Make sure to periodically, if you're using your standing mixer especially, just scrape down the sides because you wanna make sure everything gets well incorporated um, and you don't leave any like chunks of butter or anything like that because I don't like the way that that can sometimes turn out, you know? So now to this, oh, I can get it all off of there. This is my bigger standing mixer and can I just tell you, much prefer the smaller one, especially when doing normal batches of things. You're gonna add some egg yolks along with vanilla. Now, I have made these for years and years and years and I typically will, it depends on what's on my cookie platter. This year, my cookie platter is going to involve, it's gonna include, I should say, my Italian rainbow cookies, which are made with almond paste. So I don't want too much almond, I don't want too much of that flavor to overpower, so I'm gonna add just some vanilla extract. If I weren't adding the rainbow cookies to my cookie tray, I would add maybe a quarter of a teaspoon of almond extract instead of vanilla for a subtle almond flavor in the thumbprints. So you can do both. I'm gonna just go ahead and do vanilla. Also, I feel like vanilla is mostly like loved, especially by kids, more over than, you know, say almond extract. I'm gonna whip this together again for another like 30 seconds or so to a minute until everything is well combined. If it looks split, don't panic. Scrape, scrape that down. And now you're gonna go ahead and add your salt and flour. And you're just gonna mix that until it comes together. Get it all off there. That is great. That came together beautifully. Now, I'm gonna show you how I you know, sort of form these and everything, but I want you to know that this is one of those cookies the cookie dough, I should say, that is so perfect to make in advance and freeze and then just bake them when you need them last. All you do is you follow the exact same, you know, procedure, but instead of popping them in the freezer for 20 minutes, like I'm gonna show you in just a bit, you just freeze them entirely. Um, and I'll walk you through that process. I just wanna get everything off of there. But the cookie dough looks perfect. It's stiff, but pliable. It's exactly how I want it to be. And now here's what you're gonna do. I take a big cookie sheet, one big one, line it with parchment paper, okay? You take your one tablespoon measure, standard sort of cookie scoop, like that, and I just place them all next to each other, okay? And you're just gonna do this to all the dough. Just form them out. Once you have them all formed, you're gonna take each one and you're gonna roll them in your hands until they're nice and smooth and it look a little something like that. Don't worry if it's got that little peak because you're gonna press that down anyway, but you want it to be nice and smooth so that when you flatten it, it doesn't, they don't crack. Um, and I'll show you what I mean when I do that. Now you're not gonna bake them all on the same baking sheet, but these do need to go into the freezer for a bit. Um, and it's just easier to do them all on one baking sheet and then literally bake however many you want. So the great thing about doing cookie dough and popping it into the freezer is so that 
If you are making, say, a cookie box or a cookie tray for someone last minute, you're not having to make each batch of cookie dough right then and there. You literally just pull out what you need, pop them into the oven, and then you're good to go. So once you have these pretty much all rolled, I'm just gonna do these two rows so that I don't take forever. You see how they're really nice and smooth? You're gonna go ahead and take, this is a half of a, of a teaspoon measure. I like to just dip it into some flour so that it doesn't stick. It's like the perfect size for this. And you just press down the center. You can use your thumb, but I don't because it just kind of gets all weird and lopsided. So I just do it like that. You press it gently so that they look like that. And you have, if you have to move them around a bit, you can. And you just dip it into that flour as needed so that they don't stick but it's like the perfect size because you're gonna need to fill that with a half a teaspoon of jam anyway so they're perfect i'm going to continue to roll them and press them and then these are going to go into the freezer for 20 minutes exactly or you know however long you want to keep them in there for but if you're making a fresh batch of cookies these need to go into the freezer for 20 minutes these were in the freezer for 20 minutes. Now I'm not gonna cook all of them because I don't need all of them, but I wanna walk you through what you would do if you were baking them from totally frozen. So what I'm gonna do is the rest of these that I'm not baking, I'm just gonna put them all in a large Ziploc bag so that they don't take up a lot of room in my freezer. And then when I want to bake them, these are gonna go into the oven at 350 for about 13 minutes. But if I, wanna put, um, if, I, if I wanna cook them straight from fully frozen, all you do is you add your jam, just like you do right now. Half a teaspoon each is perfect. These just go into the oven for 13 minutes, but if they were fully frozen, you put them in there for 15. You're just gonna add two more minutes of cooking time and they are absolutely perfect every single time. They really save you from having to do the work last minute and they're just such a showstopper. Everyone loves them. I love using raspberry jam with the seeds. I really like using any jam with the seeds. I feel like it's got better texture. It looks better. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, and they don't, the jam doesn't caramelize so much that it becomes a little too chewy and too hard. I feel like it makes a big difference when it's with the seeds. I've also done this with fig jam, apricot, like whatever you want. But raspberry is just, it's so pretty, especially for this time of the year. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop them in. I like to clean up the edges a little tiny bit if I've made it really messy. Uh, and like I said, 20, 20, 350 for 13 minutes. And if I was baking them completely from fully frozen, they would be for 15 minutes. So you just add two minutes. I'm gonna pop these in and I'll let them cool. They're so good, they're so good. Cookies baked for 13 minutes, and I want you to see that they're firm, but they're very blonde. They don't have a lot of color on them, and this is what you're looking for. Resist the urge to overbake them because these are meant to be like very buttery, very crumbly. They're not meant to be like really hard, and they're perfect. Now you can do one of two things. You can do a glaze for them, and the recipe will include the ingredients to make a, like a sugar, like a powder sugar glaze. I personally don't love the glaze. I love a touch, like a kiss of powdered sugar just around the edges. Um, it makes them look so pretty and I just feel like it's just enough sweetness that they don't feel overpowering and they're just like complete perfection. They are everyone's favorite. I'm telling you, look at them. They're just, they're like the perfect thing. They're buttery, they're tender, they're soft. They are literally the best to ever make. All right, in the kitchen, I'll come for the bread recipe. Hope you enjoyed spending time with me, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.